What's up guys, it's Aaron here again with another instructional. Today I wanted to continue on playing De La Hiba Guard and I'm actually going to show a specific technique that is one of my favorite techniques and I think it's often um, misunderstood and I think people are a little intimidated by it. It's the baby bolo, so it's basically like a back take. I, th I think that's the name, the baby bolo. It's just a De La Hiba back take while your opponent is standing or back stepping. And so there's a lot of tiny little details that you need to do correctly in order to execute it properly in a live scenario or in class, so I just want to take some time to show you guys. It's literally one of my favorite techniques. I'm here with my good friend Ty, so let's just jump right into it. So guys, from the daily Hiba guard, we're in our position, right? I like to control his ankle with my left hand. I have some other videos on the principles of maintaining the daily Hiba guard, so if you want to check those out, the link is in the description. But just to rehash really quickly, my left hand is going to control his ankle. I try to keep my elbow tight to me. I don't want my elbow too exposed. So left hand on the ankle. My left foot is gonna have a shallow hook, so I'm not playing deep de la Hiva. I just wanna control his knee like this. And then my right leg is gonna be anywhere in between his knee and his hip, preferably up by his hip. But it's not catastrophic if you're closer to his knee. Just don't go too low. You can even put your hook inside, right? Next thing is I'm gonna get a collar grip. So I like to use the cross collar grip to control the de la Hiva. When I grab the cross collar grip, guys, I want to really put emphasis on pulling tie down. I really want to break his posture. So a good tip is to turn your forearm towards you and use your lats to pull him down. Make tie feel like he has a kettlebell attached to his neck. So I'm like this, right? Nice and tight. So the next thing I'm going to do to initiate this baby bolo, there's several different ways that it can happen. Typically, the first thing that I do is I kind of loosen the collar grip so he postures a little bit. I let him posture just a little. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a very basic variation first, is I'm going to put my foot that's in between his knee and his hips on my right leg, my free leg, on the mat. And then I'm going to start to do just a basic hip escape, just like this. Right, so I've created an angle. Now guys, I'm going to continue to create the angle, but as I do, I'm going to pull his collar this way to make him step like this. And simultaneously while pulling his collar, I'm going to kick my hook. Do you guys see my hook? I'm gonna kick it like this. See how he stepped back? Let's go back. So the motion to make him step back is gonna be kicking this hook, my left foot, and pulling the collar, just like this. There you go, that's what we need. Now guys, once he gives me that reaction, I typically like to switch my right hand to the belt, like this. He probably thinks I'm gonna try a full Baron Bolo, so he's not gonna fall and he's gonna kind of stay here. So what I'm going to do at this point is continue to hip out while I grab that belt, like this. And then look, this foot's going to come across to his far leg. Guys, it's imperative that once I get to his far leg, I keep this tight so that he can't step around, right? This is going to buy me a few seconds to make what I think is the most paramount move, where my left hand that was controlling his ankle is going to control the back of his knee. So we'll show a different angle in a second, but my left hand is going to control the back of his knee. And now I should have these grips. Once I'm here, I'm actually very safe. It's very hard for Ty to do anything. The reason that my left hand controlling his knee is so important is that if I get here and I get excited and put my leg behind his leg and he steps around, guys, he's gonna pass my guard into like a leg drag or something. So again, let's change the angle. So I have the De La Hiva hook, the ankle grip, the cross collar grip. My first motion is gonna be to take my free leg and do a hip escape. Right? Once I do my hip escape to get the angle, I'm going to pull him and I'm going to kick this. Everything is happening quicker, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm moving slowly. So I do this. Right? Once I see that belt, I'm going to grab it. And then look, this foot's going to come here. If I can't reach right now because of my dexterity, I just shrimp out again and then put it there. Now, very quickly, my left hand is going to grab the back of his pants. And now I'm safe to continue hip escaping and bring this leg behind the crook of his knee. So the reason that people are often intimidated by this technique are because they think that you need flexibility to do it. What I mean by that is they assume that you need to be able to bring your leg all the way over here and then like climb this way. You just need to do hip escapes. You just need to grab here, grab his pants, hip escape, hip escape, hip escape, 
bring your leg behind his leg. And now look guys, one last detail. Do you notice how my hip is next to Ty's leg? Right, I'm gonna scoop my hip inside like this. And then I'm gonna extend Ty as I sit up. I have to sit up so that his butt hits the ground. I don't want his butt to land on me. So I'm gonna pull his belt down, extend my feet and keeping tight hooks and sit up. Just like this, guys. Look, move forward. He fell in between my legs, guys. He did not fall on my hip. That's very important. Once we do that, we just seat belt, hook, and hook. So one more time from this angle. So I get my daily heave hook. I grab that collar grip, I hip escape. I pull him back, just like this. I grab his belt, go to the far leg, left hand to the back of the pants, hip escape, hip escape, hook comes behind the crook of his knee, and now look, one last scoot so that I'm in between Ty's legs, like this. And what I don't wanna do, what I don't wanna do is pull Ty on me like this. Cause he can knee bar me and stuff, or he can step out and step around. So go back up. I wanna pull Ty down, and extend him as I sit up. Like this, guys. And now I seat belt, hook, hook. So one more time, a little quicker. Guys, this is often taught with the sleeve and the ankle. That's fine too, you can use that as well. I like to use the collar. I like to use the collar so that I can actually create that reaction. I find that when I try to use the sleeve, I'm not able to get him to step. And it takes a little more effort. I have to start using both my feet and do something like this. So again, I have the collar, the ankle, I scoop back, I kick him back, get the belt, come here, here, scoop back. All right, guys, I know this was a long one, but there's a lot of details to be able to do it properly. So anyways, guys, try it out and let me know what you think. And if you like these videos, just like and subscribe. Thanks so much.